Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome to your November 2017 astral update. It's Raina here, your fellow Sun and Sagittarius, although this forecast is also for those who have Sagittarius rising. Just keep in mind that this is a general forecast for everyone. And if you'd like a private reading where I use your natal chart, which depends upon your time of birth, please hit me up at rainamoonastrology.com. The link is below. So in November, in general, I think that we can at least talk about the general energy of November for Sagittarius. And I think it's contemplative overall. And it usually is at this time of year, because the month before your solar return, you do have the sun in the 12th house, which is the house that is in the universal chart, connected to Pisces and its ruler Neptune. So anything Piscean would be featured in this 12th house. Dreams, past lives, so the karmic issues, psychological issues, issues involving how you trip yourself up. So it's the house of undoing, you know, substance abuse, any kind of um, other types of bad habits that do not serve you. That's all wrapped in, up in a nice little complex bow <laughs> in the 12th house. And because it is a water house, it is internalized. It is passive. It's a feminine energy. It's not out in the world trying to do push your agenda. It's, it's reflecting on things. It's less active. It's more passive. So the sun is there. Mercury will be there until the fifth. So Mercury has been in this house starting in October and coming into November. And, and Mercury is our reasoning, the, our thought process. And when we are like that in the 12th house, things are irrational. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. They just are about illogical things that deal with the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm, because it doesn't connect with the physical self, like its opposite house, the sixth house does, tends to involve things that we can't put our finger on. So intangible things. And these are, you know, so when you're thinking and you're in the 12th house, the thoughts that you're thinking can be influenced by other realms, other spiritual realms, past lives, your dream state. It's very creative and far out, but it's not grounded. Okay. And yet on the fifth, Mercury goes into Sagittarius and then all of a sudden you're off to the races because you can communicate who you are when you have Mercury in your own sign. You can promote yourself better. Before that, you may be talking about ETs and not uh, talking, you know, not trying to talk up your, your good qualities while you're trying to get a job or trying to impress a date. But let's start with the first transit that comes along, and that is the full moon in Taurus, and this is on the fourth of the month. And this is going to be in our sixth house of health, of the workplace, your daily routines, or your daily routine, I should say. Hopefully you don't have multiple routines. But... What this could mean is that you are rethinking something. Maybe you are trying to detox and you feel like you need to change your diet. Maybe you feel like you need to change something related to your schedule on a daily basis, especially if you're working from home. Well, you know what? Scratch that. Even if you're working outside the home, and you're working nine to five. Maybe you're like, you know, I really want to leave this job, but how can I 
start a business if I'm like working 40 hours a week. You may have to say, okay, I'm going to carve out an hour every morning. I'm going to get up an hour early, earlier. So I usually get up at six. I'm going to get up at five. And yes, it's going to be difficult, but I'm going to go to bed earlier. And you're just kind of like playing with your schedule. And this can really have an amazing effect if you can organize yourself better, no matter where you are on the spectrum of your work life. The, the full moon sometimes is just like dismissed as ending, ending a job, um, ending a certain health routine that you were doing. That's the simplistic way of looking at it. The real way is to note that the full moon is a time of abundance, is a time of fertility and creativity, therefore. So anything that you brainstorm at the full moon is something that can really lead to expansive results, in my opinion. So don't look at it in just one way. There are many possibilities. And... Um, Let's see what else we have going on. Well, it's this is what I want to talk about too, because while we have the sun in the 12th house, we just recently got another visitor there, and that is Jupiter. Jupiter was in Libra, the 11th house. Now it's in the 12th house. Now, while Jupiter was in Libra, did any of you experience getting your heart's desire in some way. I'm talking about a fairly big thing. It wouldn't be just like, okay, you know, I won a free ticket to Chuck E. Cheese. I'm talking about something big because the 11th house is the house of hopes and wishes and long range goals. And Jupiter there, Jupiter being the planet of luck and expansion can really boost somebody in the luckiest house. Now, me personally... I can't think of anything like super big. I mean, I can think of like one thing that happened, but I wouldn't call that the end all be all, although it was something that I was really focused on for a long time. So perhaps it worked for me. I'm curious how many of you experienced anything special like that, that really was like your heart's desire. Because now it's gone into the 12th house that deals with, again, past life issues, psychological issues, you know, mental health, and spirituality is the big one. So anything that you do in the next year that establishes a meditation routine, maybe you join some kind of spiritual center and you meet a person that we might call a guru, a spiritual teacher who really changes your life in some way. But there could also be providence, divine providence, where you are protected by an unseen force. and Or it could be blessings from past lives coming to you now, and they come when you, when you least expect it. So I really discovered all of these possibilities by listening to other astrologers describe it because I was having a hard time handling Jupiter in the 12th house, even in the natal chart. I was wondering, like, it seems to me that it would be one of those quiet influences, and it could very well be. It might even be on the psychological level that you mainly experience this. That's one of the reasons why I asked if any of you had had experienced some kind of overt blessing that the 11th house might prove as an influence when Jupiter was there in the past year. Because we have Mars in Libra transiting that 11th house all November. So it could be that Mars is the cleanup crew. So anything that you put into motion, maybe you're really making happen in November that goes along with some of those hopes or, or intentions that you've manifest or uh, 
kind of intended to come true. Maybe now it's time to make them happen. And Mars there makes you very driven to have your dreams come true. I find it very interesting, the sequence of the ninth through 12th houses, because you have the ninth house, which deals with your philosophical framework. And the 10th house is the house of career. So those two houses indicate how you view your life. What is your life philosophy and how you go about expressing that in the world? And the 11th house is an extension of the 10th house, but not necessarily simply your career, but perhaps like with your North Node, the soul's mission, or just your heart's desire that has nothing to do with making money. Maybe it has to do with just fulfilling a certain dream. And the 12th house is the dream state. So I look at the 12th house as kind of the the womb or the astral world in a way before you birth a new reality, which shows up in the first house. So that's another thing. Have heavy dreams. I mean, dream big in the next year, Sagittarius, and really place your orders, uh, put in your orders to the universe on what you want so that they can be manifested, especially when Jupiter goes into our sign in November of 2018. And so we have this year to really kind of get all those seeds planted. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to have a harvest, but at least use utilize that 12th house as a mystical place that is not a worldly dimension where you can really meditate upon what it is you want, visualize it and plant seeds of intention. Okay. So we've got that happening. There's going to be a new moon in this sector on the 18th. So it's just like kind of a uh, continuation of new beginnings with things related to the spiritual dimension for you in some way. Who knows what that could mean for you personally. As I say, Mars is in the 11th house and you have Venus in that 11th house as the month begins. And then on the 7th, it go, Venus goes into Scorpio. So that's your 12th house again. Venus in the 12th house. It could be, again, um, on the 13th, there's a conjunction between Venus and Jupiter in that 12th house. So that could be the date of getting this karmic payoff, um, payout, you know, that just keep that date in mind. You never know what might try transpire, but also there could be some kind of soulmate issues coming into play. Some kind of, what shall we say? Um, any kind of twin flames or just karmic relationships in general could be having an affair with um, Libra, Mars and Libra. That is um, in the 11th house, you know, um, that's friendships too. So perhaps you fall in lust with somebody that is a friend of a friend and it it is some kind of karmic relationship you know you never know who you're when you're going to meet your soulmate you can meet them through a friend you can meet them through a group that you belong to that's the 11th house as well but mars is more of your libido it's lust versus love so mars alone does not determine love Venus is the planet of love and beauty and Mars is physical attraction. But yeah, you know, come to think of it, uh, since Venus is in that 11th house, you could have met somebody through some social situation, maybe even in October. And 
then you realize that this is more than just an infatuation, that you really feel that you've known this person before. And with Jupiter in that 12th house, that just adds to that serendipity, that sense of delightful fate, fatedness, which is what I would call serendipity. <laughs> and one thing that I want to talk about is that this is the last month for Saturn to be in Sagittarius. Uh, I'm talking about the whole month. It is going to be for most of December as well. But then it changes into Capricorn on the 20th. So I have um, already remarked upon this in a prior uh, video, actually for the sign of Scorpio. And I mentioned how when I have watched other astrologers that sometimes when they have mentioned Saturn and Sagittarius, some Sagittarians have said, oh my God, I can't wait until Saturn leaves Sagittarius. It's just been like hell. It's been terrible the last two and a half years. And I'm like sitting there thinking, what are you talking about? This has been amazing for me. Amazing. Now, granted, that doesn't mean that every day I'm waking up feeling like this, the sense of wonder. There's sometimes when I am quite frankly pissed off. Um, and I have been uh, at various times in the last two and a half years. It's not just all unicorns and flowers, but it is something that um, has been really remarkable because that's when I started doing readings on YouTube. Now, you know, and it was a little bit less than two and a half months ago to be exact. Okay, here's the deal. If you are the kind of person who thinks that things are happening to you, that life is happening to you, then there will always be someone or something to blame. And so Sagittarius is known as a very positive sign. It is possible that for the last two plus years, you have felt thwarted in some way. Um, not knowing any of your natal charts, I can't tell you what house that would be in, for the solar chart, this has been in our first house of the self. So it is its own cycle for Sagittarians. And in order to honor it, if you look at what the first house represents, it represents your persona. How do you come across to other people? Do you seem like somebody who is solid or do you seem like a flake? Sagittarians can come across as flakes. I'm going to, you know, hey, I'm a Sagittarian. I get to say that. And that's because we love freedom and we do not like to commit to things um, willy nilly. We're very, very freedom loving, independent. Okay. And, you know, freewheeling, they call it. So sometimes we can be irresponsible. And this is a broad generalization, but it is what it is, and it's true as a broad brush statement. So if you look at some of those issues, if you resonate with that and think, yeah, you know, she's right, I do have that side to me, this was the time to kind of get your act together. Well, you still have about seven more weeks to get your act together. And you don't have to do everything at once, but you can just make resolutions. What are you going to do differently to portray somebody that others can trust and that they can count on their word? You know, in the four agreements, one of the agreements is be impeccable with your word. And that means that people know that you, when you say you're going to do something, you're going to do it. Okay. And uh, so hopefully some of you have taken advantage of this transit, but whether you have or, you're ha or you haven't, this is the last full month to really 
make those changes. And I feel like the energy is heightened. And I, I did watch somebody else's astrology video where they, they said something similar. Um, and I actually, I think I was influenced by that. It resonated with me. Let me put it that way. And that's why I'm repeating what they said, because I feel that that is true. When you get into those last degrees of any sign, any transit, you're, it's like the crystallization of all of the lessons learned. And so just, um, end on a, on a high note in that regard, if you've kind of slacked off and haven't really taken advantage of this grounding, then try start and who knows what may come for you. You know, it's very interesting because we have the new moon in our sign on December 18th. So that's two days before Saturn goes into um, Capricorn, but it is during a Mercury retrograde. So it's harder to kind of like start new things. It's the holiday season. So if you have this kind of thing that you've been resolving to do, like eat healthier, um, what, whatever it is for you, it's severely tested by the holidays, by... Actually, I heard that Mercury retrograde is a great time to diet, so it might not be tested in that way. But anyway, I digress. The last thing that I wanted to say is that Neptune is going direct on the 22nd. The day after the sun goes into Sag, Neptune turns direct, and this is in Pisces, and this is Sagittarius' fourth house of home and family. When Neptune went retrograde, I believe it was in June you may have really had revelations about your family of origin that kind of like blew some of those illusions of maybe you had this sense of an idyllic life that were kind of um, blown away. The fourth house can also be the house of the mother. So things related to your mother, if you felt like kind of um, a sense of idealizing her, there may have been some harsh realities that, that have come to the fore. And now Neptune is direct on the 22nd. And so it's back to that idealism, but the idealism can never be delusion. Um, that's the only challenge is that you have to be able to see things as they are, but don't allow the reality to discourage you. Because again, uh, just like Saturn is seen as a heavy, Neptune is seen as this negative influence that creates a lot of confusion in people's lives, depending on what house it is, or depending on the kind of angles that it forms, the, especially, you know, the challenging angles, but even the positive ones, if, if Neptune com comes in contact with it, sometimes it's not considered very good. But, you know, I just can't believe that these things are happening and it's not for our highest good. So take all of those ideas with a grain of salt and really be committed to taking the highest vibration of all of the transits and making them work for you. Okay, you guys, I think I'm going to leave it there. I hope that you have a wonderful month. Take care. Bye.